All right, so we're gonna do some heart anatomy and physiology today. Here's a coloring sheet I found on the web that was pretty close, and so we're gonna use that one. Um, the heart's got four main vessels, four valves, and four chambers. Okay, we'll start with the chambers. These are these open spaces in the heart. There's two on the top and there's two on the bottom. The ones on the top are called atria. The individual is called an atrium, atria is plural. And at the bottom are two ventricles. Okay? The atria at the top are much they have much thinner walls and the ventricles are very large and muscular. In fact, most of the heart is made of muscle. That's what these lines in here kind of represent. And I think as a courtesy to you, they made these chambers really, really big. In reality, the muscles take up most of this space. So now Remember, the patient's right is always right. The patient's left is always left. So this is which atrium? <laughs> this is the right atrium, making this one the left atrium. Which ventricle is this? Right ventricle, and this is the left ventricle. Good. So those are our four chambers. Now, four major blood vessels. I'm counting this as one. This is the vena cava, okay? One coming up from the bottom is which vena cava? Inferior. And the one coming from the top is the superior. So vena cava. And then uh, this one right here is taking blood to the lungs. So it's called the pulmonary artery. Now, let me define what, what makes an artery an artery and a vein a vein. So let's write those words down. Artery, artery takes blood away from heart. Okay, so A away takes blood away from heart, whereas vein takes blood back to the heart. Okay, yes, I know that there's no V in back to, unless you're mispronouncing it, but that's the way to remember it. A away, V, V back to. So this is an artery because it's taking blood away from a heart. Where did I say it's going? Uh. Yep, two lungs, okay. And then these bloods are these bloods. These veins are, are taking these vessels here are taking blood back from the heart. I'm sorry, back from the lungs. Wow, that's a mess. Uh, so this is from lungs, and since it's going back to the heart, these are veins. Because lungs are involved, these two earn the name pulmonary. So this is the pulmonary artery. These are pulmonary what? Veins, good. On the ba on the back side here too, these are supposed to be pulmonary veins coming from the other side because we have two lungs. And you see this looping underneath here would be headed toward the lungs on that side. Finally, so there's one vessel, two vessels, three vessels we've talked about. The last vessel is going to be this one right here. Huge blood vessel, like a garden hose for blood in the body. And that's called the aorta. Aorta, know that one. Yeah, sorry. All right, so largest uh, blood vessel in the body, the aorta. Okay, so that's your four, ves uh, four vessels. What remains now are the four valves that we need to talk about. See, so these two here look kind of like twins, and these two here look kind of like twins, and they close at the same time. Your heart sounds, guys, Smooth flowing blood doesn't make any sounds. Neither do muscles when they contract. Yet your heart makes sounds when it's squeezing. The reason it makes that, your book calls it a lub-dup sound. Lub-dup. Lub-dup. Is, is that, that whole th 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 sound your heart makes is these valves closing at the same time and then these valves closing at the same time. Okay? So you're hearing valves slap shut. That's the sound of your heartbeat, okay? So, thum, 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 thum. And the reason valves are there is to prevent blood from moving backwards because when your heart squeezes, the blood would naturally want to work back the way it came. 
So if these valves close up, it seals off that way so blood can't go back there and blood can't go back there. It has to travel these paths. But remember, it's not a constant pressure on the system. The pressure is formed when your heart squeezes and kind of releases when the heart stops squeezing. So to prevent blood from moving backwards into the heart once it gets into these vessels, you have these valves in place. These two valves here uh, <coughs> are sometimes called AV valves uh, or sometimes called uh, cuspid valves. How many cusps does this one have? Two. two. These little stringy things are called chordae tendinae. They're supposed to attach to uh, the flaps for this because this valve only has two flaps. That's why it's called the bicuspid valve. How many does this one have? Then therefore it's called the what? Tricuspid valve. That's right. So this bicuspid valve is sometimes called the mitral valve as well. Okay. This is the one that generally has the most problems like mitral valve prolapse and when people have to have heart valves replaced it's generally this one that needs it done. Okay. The other two earned the name semi-lunar valve because of their description. Somebody looked at it. Guys, what's lunar mean? Moon. And what does semi mean? Half. So somebody looked at these valves, and again, these pictures aren't perfect. Looked at these valves and said, hey, these kind of look like half moon shapes. And so they named these the semi-lunar valve. So this is the pulmonary semi-lunar valve because it's going to the lungs. And this is the what? It's on the board up there. That was this one, pulmonary semilunar. Then this is the other semilunar valve. This is the aortic semilunar valve because it's leading into the what? To the aorta. Yep, that's right. Now, let's go through, and I didn't have you write anything on that sheet because I didn't want you to mess yours up, but if you can, in an organized way, I'm going to show you the path that blood takes through the heart, okay? So blood comes back to the heart through, and it's v v back to the heart, so it's traveling through a what? Mm -hmm. A vein. The vena cava are the largest veins in the body. The one on the top here, again, is the superior vena cava. It's bringing blood from the, uh, the top half of your body. Your arms up here, uh, your, your brain, your head, your face, all this blood drains from those areas back through here. Now, fighting much harder to accomplish the same job is this vein because it's having to fight the force of gravity. The vena cava down here is bringing deoxygenated blood from your liver, your organs, from your legs and your lower extremities back up, and they all end up in this chamber here. So blood goes from the vena cava and ends up in this chamber, which is known as the what? Chamber. Careful. Chamber is what? Atrium, which one, right or left? Right. That's correct. This is the right atrium. And then, and it, it, it stay here is brief, so there's some accuracy to what you said because most of the blood doesn't stay in here when it enters this chamber. It just cruises right on through this valve known as the what? Tricuspid. Tricuspid valve and ends up in this chamber right here. Class, what's this chamber called? The right ventricle. Good. Now, this muscle's going to squeeze, and when it squeezes, this valve is going to slap shut, which means the only way out now is through this valve. And what's the name of this valve again? That's correct. And the reason it's the pulmonary semilunar valve, it's the valve that leads to the lungs. Okay? So it travels through this valve and then through this vessel on its way out to the lungs. This vessel is known as the pulmonary artery. So, again, recap so far. Vena cava, right atrium, tricuspid valve through this chamber, we're known as the right ventricle, up through the uh, pulmonary semilunar valve, up to the lungs through the pulmonary artery. Now folks, the blood on this side of the heart is deoxygenated. 
It's already been out to the body, it has already expended all of its oxygen and picked up carbon dioxide. Okay, It's headed to the lungs to make a great exchange. All these red blood cells are, are starving and they're like, hey, we need oxygen because this, we got to pick it up to deliver to the cells. And they're dumping off a ton of carbon dioxide in that area as well. So they go to the lungs. So let me put a dark line in here to make it easier to follow. Um, and now they're coming back from the lungs now coming through this vessel right here folks what's this vessel called pulmonary vein and folks look there's pulmonary veins on this side too I don't particularly care for this part of this diagram and I know that's rude to say because I didn't draw it <laughs> I should probably have drawn my own but they're supposed to go into here and usually there's holes right here to show, yeah, they're emptying into that spot. But they're going into this chamber right here. What's this chamber called? Left atrium. left atrium is correct. And as it travels into the left atrium, again, most of this blood is going to find its way directly through this valve already known as what? Bicuspid valve. And then the last little bit gets squeezed out by the atria. Squeezed out down into this space here, which is known as the left ventricle. left ventricle. Then the heart squeezes, and when it does, it causes this valve, this one-way valve, to slap shut. And this one will open and allow, what's this valve called? aortic semilunar valve and blood will then be able to travel out via the aorta and they show it going up here and down and then that's what this is back here the aorta if you looked it up in your textbook yesterday gets a couple of different names here it's called ascending here it's called aortic arch this brief little thing here is called the descending this is the thoracic down here further is the abdominal aorta just aorta is fine, okay? Aorta is the huge, huge blood vessel in the body that delivers blood, okay? Any questions about the path that blood takes through the heart here, folks? Oh, and some of this blood is going to escape up through these. That's how <coughs> your your head and your arm are are uh, supported with blood is what comes out of these three pipes up here. Um, there's this is called the brachiocephalic artery, and it goes to your head and to your arm. And then this one is your car common carotid, and this one is your uh, uh, left subclavian. And so they, they cruise their way up to the, uh, those parts of the, of the uh, body. So this chamber also is a lot more muscular than the right side because its job is to live, deliver blood where? When, when it leaves the left side of the heart, guys, where's that blood going? Yeah, it's got to send the blood everywhere. It's got to send it to the entire body. So this chamber has to squeeze really hard. This one, not squeezing quite as hard. It's a very short trip. It's going to the lungs, which is just right next door. Folks, how big is your heart? About the size of your fist. And it sits right in the center of your chest. Now, people think, oh, it's more on the right side. No, it's pretty much dead center. This little part right here pokes over to your left side there. Uh, on the left side where the lung is, in fact, there's a little notch out of the lung called the cardiac notch where the apex or point of the heart sits. But, um, but yeah, it's pretty much in the center. Folks, why is this, what, what was number 11 called? Interventricular. Yes, interventricular because it's in between the ventricles. Septum because it is a divider. Why is this so important? That's exactly right. It keeps the oxygenated blood from
from mixing or mingling with the deoxygenated blood. Otherwise, you get you're sending blood out that is only partially oxygenated, and your whole body suffers. And then that causes your heart to work harder, which means it becomes larger, which means it actually becomes less efficient when it does that, and it's just a nonstop cycle until your heart just becomes huge. So yeah, having holes in the uh, septum can cause issues. So that's pretty much the anatomy of the heart right now, and uh, and that'll pretty much cover it.